Oh, man. <laughs> what a sell-off we had in the markets. The Dow down 666.666. Oh, ominous. Down 2.5%. Huge drop. We have a lot to talk about. This is the weekend edition. My name is D7. This is good through February 4th, 2018. And let's get after it. The market's in bloody territory. Everybody down more than 2% except for the NASDAQ right at 2%. But that is huge. Anytime you're down 1% of the market, that's massive. But when you're down 2 plus percent, oh, forget it. Big drops. You don't see that very often. U.S. dollar higher, 0.7%. Crude oil off by 1.5%. Gold off by 1.3%. Silver off by nearly 4%. We got so many changes on signals coming, guys. You're going to love this video. VIX spiking higher. Fear higher by 27%. We are over 17. Big pop. Bitcoin higher at this moment by nearly 6%. GBTC down nearly 9%. Woo! We're going to look at a lot of stocks, a lot of time frames. This is going to be rich with information. Before I do this, I want to share with you something crazy that we're doing. If you go to grokatrade.com, you'll notice the website is different. You'll notice here, if you're a stock trader and you want free trading videos, fill in the form here, but we're getting into cryptocurrency. If you want more information on cryptocurrency and you just want some chart patterns, um, fill out the form here. Perfect, but here's what's super cool. In March, I'm gonna be, next month, I'm gonna be in Florida. And I'm gonna do two, two events. They're one day events and you can join us in Naples, Florida. So you can come to Naples if you want to. If you're in the area, you can be part. On March uh, 16th is a Friday. I'm, for stock traders, we're gonna be doing technical analysis all day long, just hanging out, do, trading together. And then cryptocurrency, same thing, technical analysis. It's tr training and teaching, so two days. And down here, there's some webinars. I redid the homepage here. So hopefully you guys like it. Let's get into this. All right, we're looking at the spiders. So the question is, should we be freaking out? The, and maybe, but I don't think so. And let's get into this. Back here on January 30th, and I had one of our mentor students contact me and says, man, thank you so much. Uh, I started liquidating all my positions on January 30th, and it happens to be on this day, the same day I put my sell signal. And that's because this individual knew when to start liquidating because of the training they went through. And, and then look where we're at now, big, big drop. So if you're new here, the arrows are my um, personal calls that I put on, on buy and sell. You know, let's get into it here, let's get out because it's too squirrely. All right, let's get back in and oh, let's get out, it's getting squirrely <laughs> and it's heading down. Okay, there's the deal. This is dropping, dropping, dropping. We're down below the 20 day moving average. We're down on huge, huge volume, but we're approaching a major area of support. So this is giving us a really decent opportunity for a buy. And if you look here, I'm gonna draw a Fibonacci. We're approaching the 61.8 right there. So we could go down lower and then come back up. And if we were to get a hammer here going into next week, early next week, stay above the 274, 275 area, that would be really good to see a bounce there. That would could potentially be a buy area. The only thing I don't like on the pullback here is we have small candlestick, small candlestick, small candlestick, and big one. Normally, I want the big ones at the top, smaller ones coming down. I did not get that here, so it's an ugly, ugly pullback. This could turn into what's called a bull flag. But any way you shake it, we're pulling into some buy territories, okay? Now, what I wanna do, this is the daily chart. That's down here, the weeklies here. If you look at the weekly, the weekly now gets a big fat sell signal. So we had a buy here, now that's a sell but we have huge support. I'm not freaking out by any stretch of the imagination, guys. This thing can pull back here really nicely to support and boom, head higher. And if we do that, that's gonna be great for everybody out there in the markets. I mean, it's a great opportunity that happens. On the flip side, 
if we drop down below, we go down, down, down and break that support, then we're in a lot of trouble. If we stay below that, meaning we close the week below that support or this support or the 20 week moving average, that's the blue one right there, bad news. We really need to stay above these support areas. That's what I'm looking for on the weekly chart. If you look here on the monthly chart, last month, we closed above a major area. So this gives, this was huge. If we would have come crashing back down, like I said, we would have dropped down multi-month sell-off. But now that we busted up past resistance, we should stay above this line now. If we can stay above this line, all is well in the markets. All is well. <clears throat> All right, um, diamonds, take a look at this. I put a sell on that back on the 30th and let's put a sell on this on the weekly. The monthly is still fine, we're up, 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 up. I think we are just fine on the monthly. We have, I think we have a lot of upside potential. Let's see if that actually happens. NASDAQ, uh, put a sell on that one, it looks like on Thursday and then we dropped. And here, ooh, the weekly on the NASDAQ closed back below an area that should have been support. It broke it. I'm gonna double confirm that with a line chart. Sure enough, we are below it. That's no good. Guys, that's no good. This NASDAQ tech stocks could be in significant trouble. Ouch, okay. That's just not good. Okay, the monthly is fine. Let's do the Russell's 2000, the Russell's 2000 daily. Daily, put a sell on that on the 30th, and man, we just keep crashing lower, breaking all sorts of support, guys. So I'm not liking this. Now, the S&P I have hope for, but here's the problem. Small caps are busting down. It's below the 20-day moving average. 50 day moving average. It's below all major moving averages. I have the 200 down here, but it's really hurt itself and busted down through this trend line. Now this one, not good. This could be leading, this could be leading a charge to the downside and that is problematic. So if I were to do a quick Fib retrace, we're already past the 76.4, are you kidding me? No, nasty. Let me go to this swing and see where we're at. Still below the 61.8. Wow. If we were to go to this one, I mean, it's fine, but oh man. Okay, just problem city here. If I look at the weekly, this is, look at the rising wedge. The rising wedge, I said, look for this. This, this Here's the cell. <clears throat> There's the sell right there. This is in trouble. Small caps are in trouble. We need to stay above the rising 20 week moving average. That has to happen. Monthly is fine. Let's go to financials. Financials put a sell on it, tried to bounce up, and then it came crashing down right there. So it broke an area that should have been support. You can see that we we tried to bounce there. If you look at this, we hit resistance, we hit resistance, we hit resistance, we hit resistance, that's fine. We break resistance, now resistance is serving as support, 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 we go higher, we drop, we find support, 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 we go higher and then crash. That is bad. So the financials are broken. I gotta do another trend line here that will be, very important for me. If I go from this swing to th this swing, say we broke that one too. Okay, I mean, whoa to this market at this moment. Very, very, very not good. <laughs> so now my tune is changing now that I'm analyzing, now that I'm analyzing this more. So small caps are in trouble, NASDAQ's in trouble, and now financials are in trouble. So this is a warning, guys. This could be the start of a nasty little sell-off. It We are teetering on a nice slide in the markets. Like when I say a nice slide, multi-month slide. However, we have a better chance of staying 
buoyant here in the markets based off the S&P and the Dow. Let's just see what happens because right now, those that usually lead the direction, small caps, financials, they're, they are really weak technically compared to everybody else. Take a look at the US dollar. US dollar is finally gonna be a buy. There's our buy. Had a low base, I thought it was gonna head down, but it, now it's a buy. That's putting pressure. With the US dollar strong being stronger, and if it does start to go higher, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on the stocks. Crude oil, had a buy, a, I had a sell, and then a buy, I turned it around. Uh, I'm gonna stay with my buy on this, even though we dropped. Let's see what the weekly holds. I'm good with the buy. Okay, I'm good with the buy there. Let's look at gold, it was down quite a bit. I put a buy, but look what happened. Put a sell because it broke down below the line, but then it healed itself, put a buy. We're now above, but today we dropped. Yeah, man, okay, so gold has to be a sell now. Anytime you go sideways, you're gonna get a lot of calls, and those calls are always gonna be for an expense, an expense trade, because it's just going sideways. But soon, that will run to the downside or run to the upside, and you will capture those. So like here, if you're sideways, you get a lot of calls, but then you wait for those long runs to the downside, long runs to the upside. That's where the money is. Here, you're not going to get you know a lot of money. Okay, let's look here at the weekly. The weekly, oh boy, do I want to put a sell on the weekly? Yeah, I think it's a time to take profits right now. Let this thing drift down and look for a better place. Monthly is fine. Let's look at silver. Silver put a buy, man, major blow up. Um, this is bad, below all major moving averages. Big drop, no good on silver. And look at this, silver busted that area of, oh, and that's, oh, no, 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 that's no good. The weekly broke down through support. If I go to a line chart, you can just see it. See it, poke its head down below that. And if you come up, you can see how we're touching it right there. You come up higher. Here, let me blow this up. Let me blow this up. I want you guys to see what I'm doing. Whoa, this goes way back. Way back. See how we touch it, touch it, touch it. If I go to this, this is what we're looking at. Then we go back to the line chart. Boom. Now I'm using trading view down in the... the um, down in the description, you can see a link. But there's that's the weekly chart. The monthly chart, just sideways, nothing. Just a mess going sideways. VIX, VIX, we had a sell on it, but then we got to turn around and put it a buy again. We got to put a buy on the VIX. The, the VIX is going higher. So we had a buy here, up, 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 started pulling back, put a sell on it, and now it's a buy. The weekly stays at a buy, big, big pop. The monthly stays at a buy, and it's rallying higher. 17 is is a fair number. It's uh, nothing to you know freak out about, 17. You know, if it gets up in the 30s, that's a different ball game. So that's where we're at. Um, for those interested in Bitcoin, Bitcoin, I called it a buy yesterday. And so there it is. Look, we're rallying up. We do have some resistance, but we should be looking to go higher. So Bitcoin is a buy far as I'm concerned, and we should start going higher. Really want to see this over 10,000. If we can get over 10,000, feel a little more comfortable, um, especially 10.3. If we get over 10,300 bucks on Bitcoin, it should rally up nicely in the markets. GBTC, we're down, down, down. That's an inverted hammer, uh, candlestick reversal pattern. Look for that to bounce. That, that looks like it's getting ready to bounce anytime now. Anytime now. The weekly chart had a sell on it, it's going lower. Uh, let me look at Bitcoin weekly chart. Had a sell on it going lower, but what's interesting with the weekly on Bitcoin is we have coming down to the 61.8. This is a really good area for buying, really good area for buying. Let's quickly look at the let's quickly look at the um, some stocks of interest that I think you guys will find interesting. And as we do that, remember. 
go to Grok Trade and look at, you know, check out this information about the one day with me. So one day VIP with me, we're gonna sit and look at charts, charts, charts. I'll be teaching you, teaching you, teaching you. It should be a fun time. <clears throat> These classes are really small. I'm only taking 10. So there's only 10 people per class and that's all I'm doing because that's all the bigger my room is. <laughs> Uh, so here we are. Let's go and look at some stocks of interest. Apple down 4.4%. Are you kidding me? Ouch. So we had a sell on Apple. We had a sell on Apple back on January 24th. Down, 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 down. There's the pullback to the area of resistance. You see that? And then down. We do have a support area right here with this 200-day uh, moving average. And we have some support coming across there. But it's look at the trajectory. It's going down. It's bleeding out. So that's not good. The weekly is, oh, we, last week we called it a sell on the weekly. And, and it broke a major area of support, guys. If you hold Apple, you want out of it. You need to go flat for a while. Get out of it. Do not be, you should not be holding Apple right now. Technically speaking, it is broken. It's broken. Oh man, everybody is just crashing and burning. The monthly, look at this. The monthly right now is dropping. Because the month is just getting started, I cannot put a sell signal because it's still a moving dynamic candlestick. So I won't put a sell on that. Take a, um, AXP, gets a big fat sell. The weekly already had a sell. So that's doing fine. The daily though gets a sell. The sell there, the monthly is looking bad. Let's take a look here at Boeing. Boeing, I got a buy. I'm good with that. I'm going to stay with my buy. Caterpillar down 3%. I had a sell on that one back here in January 24th, and it's down, down, down quite a bit. And I put a sell on it last week on Caterpillar. Cisco put a sell on it, and it broke a major area of support. That's in trouble, and now it's going to get a sell signal on the weekly. You do not want to be in Cisco right now. CVX put a sell on it back here on the 29th, and it has just crashed and burned. Though, ooh, did not have a sell signal on it yet. So now it gets one on the weekly. The monthly looks bad, bad, bad too. Disney. I, Disney, I had a sell on it, and I'm good with my sell. I'm going to stay with my sell on Disney. Um, I don't need some of these lines now. I'll clean it up just a little bit. So I got a sell on Disney, and I'm good with that sell on Disney. Let's see what the weekly has. Put a sell on the weekly three weeks ago, and it's going in the right direction of my call. Dow DuPont was down 3.5%. Had a sell on that on the 29th. Oh, and it's just bad. The weekly finally gets... That call, the monthly looks bad too. Okay, GE down 2.37%. Let's look at that. Had a buy on it. Oh no, I keep trying to find that we're gonna have a bottom and it's just keeps bleeding out. I need to put a trend line here. See, it broke that. It broke that. That's no good. That is no good. <clears throat> Drinking my coffee on a Saturday morning. Oh. Yeah, it's just the GE. I keep GE. I'm trying to give you love. and <laughs> You're not reciprocating. Not doing it. The weekly, I had a sell on it. And I'm good with my sell on that. The monthly is just in trouble. Okay, Goldman Sachs down 4.5%. Oh, 
man, it poked its head over resistance and it came down. That is no good. Down below the 20 day moving average. The weekly, I can't put a sell on it yet. The monthly is saying we are going to break down. Oh, I so want to put a sell on the weekly because it looks like it's going to be that. Okay, HD. Oh, I find, why do I not have a sell on this one? How did Home Depot get away with me not having a sell put on this? See, I think my calls, I think my signals are disappearing. I don't know. I don't know, but I have to add one now. I'm just three days late. Okay, two days late. I would say this one. I should have had one on this one. This one, I was okay, but that one, I should have had one. Okay. Home Depot Weekly. That gets a big fat sell. Take your profits now. Got in around 150. We get out here around the 200 mark. Okay, cool. Cool. IBM had a buy. Another one that got by me on the sell side. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm going to put a sell there. The weekly, I had a sell on it, so I'm good with that. Have a sell on Intel, and it broke down below. So that's in trouble. The weekly, I can't do yet. Wow, Johnson & Johnson wasn't down too bad compared to everybody else. I already had a sell on it, but it, it did close below an area of support. No good. What's the weekly? The weekly gets a big fat sell signal. Done. Done. JP Morgan gets a sell signal. I don't want to be any, eh, but the weekly, monthly look fine to me. Coca-Cola. Oh, the Coca-Cola. I know some who's who there. Guys, if you're holding Coca-Cola, this is a time to sell some of that. Coca-Cola is broken. McDonald's. Oh, it broke support too. Oh, McDonald's is broken. There's so many fortune or uh, so many big, big blue chip companies that are broken right now. So, so many. And that should have been a sell. See another one, 3M. Where's my sell at? So now I'm late to the party on my sell. I should have had a sell right there, and it didn't happen. Oh, where are those calls? Here, um, this is Merck. We got to sell on that one. We're dropping uh, Merck. Hold on. I had a sell on Merck a few weeks ago. Wow, big drop. This is a bear pullback. So on the monthly, even though you got to buy, that thing's looking bearish, bearish, bearish. Microsoft off by 2.6%. It gets a sell signal. There, the weekly, I'll, I'm fine with the buy. Let's see what happens. Nike was not down hardly at all. I'm good. I got a buy call on this one from way back here in October, around $50 or so. We're at 67 and I'm good with that. PFE is doing fairly well. I got a sell on it, but I think this is going to, oh, I don't know. That's interesting. I'm going to put a sell on the weekly. I'm going to put a sell on Pfizer. Pfizer gets a sell signal. I have one on the daily, but I think it could bounce. PG. Oh, man. We put a sell on it back here on the 22nd of January. 23rd, it looks like. And we could just slid out of bed. The weekly put a sell on it. Oh, it's just horrible. So last month, this month just got started. I haven't done it yet, but la this here, last, so today is only the third, so we're just getting started, so we're only a few days in, but now my monthly gets a a uh, sell. Let's go to Travelers. Ooh. Technically speaking, I should not put a sell on it, but when I put everything else together, I think it's in trouble. I'm going to stay with my buy. UNH, UNH broke a support area. 
I have to give it a sell now. No, very few people see that. If you don't have your line drawn correctly, you won't see it. But that is breaking of the ice. That is is, is problem. That is a problem. The weekly gets a sell signal. Gets a sell signal. UTX gets a sell signal. Man, we have added a ton of sell signals. I'm good, I'm good, okay. Wait till we get to the tech stocks. Man, whoa, did it break down below this line? It did, it broke down below that line. What a major change. Just boom to the upside. Look at this, we up, 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 we busted through resistance, support, 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 support. It catches its breath, it rallies again, it pulls back doesn't even get near support, it rallies again, and then Friday comes. Bam, bloody. Oh, we took a big hit Friday, guys. Big, big hit. So the weekly on Visa gets a sell signal. I don't know anybody from Visa, but don't hold it if you have it. Sell signal on Verizon, and I use Verizon <laughs> as a carrier don't have any of its stock. But that is, it's broken. If I were to show you a line, it snapped that line, snapped it. It's interesting. This month I've been trading 20 years in the, in the markets utilizing technical analysis. I see these lines organically. Like before this line was even in here, I knew that was a rising wedge. I just see them. So I'll put the lines here so you can see it. And if I go here to this one, see the rising wedge and see how it broke down. So that's when I first came to this, I said, oh, that's a sell. I, Cause I saw the rising wedge and I saw that support was broken. And I don't, I can't do it perfectly, so I do draw the lines because my eye isn't as perfect as the computer. And that really puts them on nicely. So that's in trouble, trouble, trouble city. Walmart was did fairly well. I got a sell on Walmart. We're dropping. That's a bull pullback. That's a buy territory. That's a buy territory on Walmart. Unbelievable. Man, Exxon was down 5%. All was well until Friday. And earnings and bad things. Let's look at some tech stocks. You guys enjoying this? Do you like that I go through? I'm giving you like weeklies, dailies, and monthlies, and I'm just giving you a ton of information here. And I hope you appreciate it. I really do. I love your comments too. Love your comments. Let's go here to tech stocks, tech stocks, tech stocks. We already looked at Apple. Take Amazon was up 3%, are you kidding me? Holy smokes, man. So Amazon's a buy, still a buy. We're still making money on that. Baba though was down, oh no, Baba gets a big fat sell signal. Everything else is fine. Baidu down 3%. We already had a sell signal on it, so it's in trouble that the weekly gets one. There's the weekly sell. Man, a lot of weakness out there. Cisco, I think we already looked at that one. Catfish. I don't know why I call it catfish. <laughs> Just looks like it to me. We're going to go here. It's a sell. The weekly is a sell. Sell, 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 eBay, 4% down. But we up, 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 up. I have to put a sell on it, but I think it's short-lived. I'm looking for a buy opportunity. Come down here, fill that gap, find support, boom, look for a buy. Look for a buy. Facebook, up, 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 down, down, down. I'm good, I'm just gonna stay with my buy calls on Facebook. Facebook's looking fine. Google is in trouble. It hits support, it, it's hard for me to put a sell signal here because it has a good chance of bouncing off of support here, but I'm gonna do it. There's my sell signal on Google. Oh, I need to also put my sell signals on the weekly. On Google and Google with an L. 
GoPro is actually higher? Wow, it's been so bloody lately. Let's look at GoPro. Down, 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 resistance, resistance, resistance. I'm good with my sell. It's that resistance, it can't get higher. I mean, it looks like a bottoming type formation, but until it can pop up over resistance, it's a sell in my book. Not interested. I had a sell on GoPro way back here on the weekly chart in October, beginning of October, and we were starting to short it around the $10 mark. Now it's half that. Wow, that's a big, yeah, it's a big drop. The monthly. Come on, wake up. The monthly is this. I'm using TradingView. I think I told you that. The link's in the details. We already looked at Microsoft. NVIDIA, or Netflix rather, is up. I put a sell on it. Do I want to put a buy on Netflix right now? Man, I think I'm going to. I'm going to put a buy on Netflix. Netflix is a buy. NVIDIA down 2.9%. I got to give it a sell. I got to give it a sell. Let's get rid of NVIDIA. Take your profits. We had a nice run. Thank you. Everyone else is fine. Oracle down nearly 3%. Oh, I got to change my buy to a sell. And the weekly gets a sell. The weekly gets a sell. Priceline down more than 2%. I already had a sell on it. Finding support at the 200-day moving average, and the weekly, and the weekly gets a sell. I know I'm moving fast, guys. I know I'm moving fast. Oh man, I see why I didn't put a sell on it at support, but it broke support Friday, so I have to put a sell now. Have to put a sell on that, and oh boy, look at the weekly. I think the weekly. I gotta look at this one closer, guys. Oh, check this out. This is PayPal Weekly. Snapped it. Uh-oh, no good. PayPal, you guys, time to take profits. And I think going in early next week, we're gonna see a bounce, like an initial bounce, maybe Monday. I, I could see us bouncing before we crash down a little further. Um, I don't think that we're done. I think we're gonna keep dropping a bit here to some major support areas, but you might get that initial bounce. That might give you a good opportunity to unload some of these. My, but this is educational purposes only. Go seek your own financial advisor. <laughs> Red Hat. Oh, Red Hat. Again, that right there should have been a sell. There's no sell there. Okay, a little late to the sell party, but there it is. Shop that we've added is still a buy. We're good with that. We're good with Shopify. Snap, only down 1.5%. I can't believe I just said only down 1.5%. <laughs> That is crazy. I still got a buy on it. I'm good with Snap as a buy. Um, I think the weekly will be a buy soon. And Twitter down 4.5%. We're up, 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 but above support. I'm not going to put a sell on it. I'm good with that. Woo, man. So, guys, here's the long and short of everything. If you are still with me, let me know that you actually made it to the end of the video. Say, I watched it all or I made it to the end. Um, kudos to you if you're still listening. Let me sum it all up. This is what I foresee happening. The, the S&P and in the Dow give us a great opportunity for a nice bull pullback, looking for support areas that might give us a great area for to start buying again. The big problem that I see has to do with the NASDAQ and small caps with the Russell's 2000. The, they tend to tell what the future is going to be for the Dow, the S&P. The, so the problem is they are broken. Those are, they're going in bearish territory, they're breaking support. So that does not bode well for the major indices. Doesn't bode well for the S&P 500, doesn't bode well for the Dow. What should we do? This is what I would do. I would be looking to liquidate. Now, mind you, I have been completely flat, okay? So I put my sell on the major indices in I have been flat the market. All that means is I'm in cash. 
Some of you guys are not in cash, you're holding this, and you take a little bit. You can't always make money, and I know it's been easy to make money the last few years. It's just like, man, you just be in the markets and you're making money. The joys of technical analysis really help you um, sidestep danger, sidestep uh, slippery slopes. And and that's why I'm a technician, and that's why I spend the time doing these charts for my users. I'm all with the hope that you guys will trust us enough to teach you uh, the, the skills of this. What we're doing here is like, um, I would say, not even grade school. This is what we're teaching here is very low level, low quality education compared to like our mentorship. That's where we really take you in and say, here are the things you need to know. And we go into great detail on how to use the charts to help make you money in the markets. So listen, right here, if you go to that on your cell phone, send a text and all I want you to do is put your name, put your name that you're interested in knowing more about our training, interested in that. And if you put in, put your name and email, you gotta put your name and your email <laughs> and we will um, get you more information about how we can train you. Now with all that said, the markets overall are broken. The markets have been on a huge run. I mean, I got some statistics here. This is, we've had the biggest percentage drop since June of 2016 and the steepest point decline since, get this, we, we dropped so much on Friday. It was the, the biggest point drop that we have experienced since 2008 when the financial markets crashed. And I think that was the same time we also had a 666 or a 665 drop day, point something that rounded to a 666. If I remember, I need to go back to my videos, extra bonus points if you can find that video for me. And anyway, the this is the worst week we've had in two years. But what's interesting is, and I, I saw this statistic saying that we finally broke a record. We had a record run in the markets without a 3% drop in the markets that lasted 311 days. But we got our 3% drop in the markets on Friday, intraday, and that broke our rally, our record rally of 311 days. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. So I'm surprised we didn't drop 500 or 600 points actually, because things that go up a long way, it's like a rubber band that will drop pretty quickly, they'll snap back. So I think we're in for a lot of profit taking coming in. So this is what I'm looking for going into the future. This is what I'm looking for. If we start to pull back, but what I find is it's it's pulling back on not a lot of volume and it's, and it's shallow. It's not a, a drastic pullback, but just slight pullbacks. If we get that, and especially if we get a one day huge sell off, but it rallies back by days in, that's a buy opportunity for all of us. And we can continue to ride this rally to the upside. I mean, Friday, we had uh, a job report that came out that just shocked all analysts. It beat expectations. And so the economy is red hot. But with the US dollar starting to bounce, it's gonna put a little pressure on the equities and the stocks that we have out there. If you can join us in Florida, it'd be a good time in March, spring break, man. So anyway, appreciate you guys. We'll catch you later. Bye.